Does Google see Muslims the same way, whether you were in France, in Poland, or in Pakistan, whether you speak English, Polish, or Urdu? Hello and welcome, my name is William, and I've tested how does Google see Muslims depending on the location you are and the language you speak. I used Google Chrome's virtual console to virtually change my location and double-checked with browserleaks.com. And here is what you get if you are in England and an English-speaking user if you Google about Muslims in different countries in the world. What if we Google Muslims in the UK being in England speaking English? What is the general impression? Lots of English flags, Prince Charles, some people from the far right, some people in the military. It's hard to tell, there is no general trend apart from people uh, praying and protesting. What are the websites that appear? Lots of news outlets, a few representative organizations, some universities. What about Muslims in France? Similarly, here lots of French flags and lots of people praying, but mainly lots of people protesting. Again, there's an overrepresentation of women in hijab. What message do we get? The first idea that comes to my mind is that there's lots of political issues around Muslims in this country. It seems that the only thing Muslims do in this country is protesting. Again, most of the websites are news websites, press agencies some think tanks. What about Muslims in Poland now? Again, there is a collection of Polish flags and lots of people protesting. They're not Muslim this time. It's far-right protesters protesting against Muslim presence in Poland. When I look at the pictures, I feel lots of people are angry against Muslims. You only have a few people gathering for prayer, and here you have a thumbnail of my documentary about Polish Muslims. And again, most of these images come from news websites, press agencies, and so on. Now Muslims in the USA. There is a lot, a lot of American flags everywhere. Again, an overrepresentation of women in hijab, mass gatherings, protests. There's a few more statistics here. I see charts, pie charts, maps. So now you have a mix of news websites, press agencies, think tanks, or research institutes. What about Muslims in India? So again, a few Indian flags, a few maps, and lots of protests, mass gatherings. I guess this has to do with the current affairs, with the pressure from Hindutva. Now Muslims in Pakistan. Again, there's only mass gatherings, a few Pakistani flags, one Indian flag, protests, prayers, and more on. So far, it seems that Muslims across the world, the only thing they do is either pray and protesting. If you Google Muslims in Mauritius, it's a bit different. There are pictures inside of a mosque, there are pictures of mosques. Um, you, know, you have one protest, portraits of individual people who, I guess, have been making the headlines. Pictures of people gathering for weddings. Uh, people seem happy here. You have the impression it's either people who are uh, in politics making the headlines or people simply living their daily life. So my question is, why does Google return so many pictures of people protesting and only in Mauritius you see people living a seemingly normal lives, getting married, uh, gathering for mosques or different events. People don't seem angry at all. You see people smiling, you see kids. So the question is why? What if you emulate a foreign user located in England, but looking up Muslims in their native language. If you just type Muslims, now the pictures are very different. There is again an overrepresentation of women in hijab, a few English flags, one American flag, people just posing for pictures, you have portraits, people praying, people smiling, people from different generation, you see black people. What if now a French user in the UK types Muslims in French? So. Musulman. The tone now is a little bit different. I see now pictures of Mecca, still people protesting, praying. Here you have Marwan, a friend of mine. He's been like a very, very great activist in France back in the 2010s. Pictures from Muslims in America, still this mass gathering, protest, and so on. Now, what if I type in Polish, Muzumania? Again, there's an overrepresentation of women in hijab, especially in niqab, and lots of people dressed in white, and it's always people um, gathered in mass for prayer, people wearing a LGBTQ flag. And again, as a general trend, we only see pictures from news website, press agencies. If a Spanish user Googles Musulmanes in England, the first picture that comes up to my eyes is the picture of Shazad Yunas, the CEO of Muzmatch. Now, Muz, a dating website for Muslims. I know the guy, he's been nice to me, but I just wonder why, if you type Musulmanes, uh, 
he comes up. So apart from him, you see, again, lots of people gathered for prayer, uh, pictures of Mecca, people in the US, have women smiling here, families, you have kids. What now if I tap in Urdu Musalman? Many portraits of individual people, footballers. But now what if you uh, Google uh, Musalman, but in Hindi, in Devnagari, there's a lot, a lot of mass gatherings again, uh, pictures of Narendra Modi, almost no individual portraits of people. You still have, you know, kids, here and there but it's mainly men actually lots of lots of men the pictures are much more diverse overall there is a variety of people and still you have all these uh, cliche stereotypical mass gatherings for prayer a few protests here and there um, but that's it really you still have uh, individual portraits of people smiling doing their daily activities it seems much more informative, but still you feel that it's related to current affairs and political events. But now, what if you locate yourself in a different country and look for Muslims in different countries of the world in your own language? Let's imagine you were in France, you speak French and you Google about Muslims. It is exactly the same pictures as if you were located in the UK, meaning that the first conclusion we have is that location doesn't matter. It's more the language you type your query in. But now what if, as a user in France, you Google about Muslims in the UK? I see here similar pictures to what we found when we Googled Muslims in England in English. United Kingdom flags, people in uniform. Uh, can I see protests? Yeah, there is a few, but much less. Again, all of these are French-speaking news websites, press agencies, stock images. What if your French user types about Muslims in Poland, Musulman en Poland? The first picture that comes up is a screen grab from my documentary. A few Polish flags, protests still. Is it Prince Charles? What the actual hell? And an overrepresentation of the mosque of Kruszyniany, which is one of the oldest mosques in Poland. What now if we Google Muslims in Spain, Musulman on Espagne? Here, the first thing that I see is lots of maps. I guess people have been more curious about the historical presence of Muslims in Spain. What if your French user Google's about Muslims in the US, Musulmans en Amérique, aux États-Unis. So here the first thing that we see is lots of lots of American flags, uh, all the different presidents from Obama, Trump, Biden, everyone. There is a picture of Sadiq Khan, what is he doing here? Um, lots of people gathering for prayer. There isn't even a picture of Regent's Park Mosque, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. It's in the UK, it's in London. What if your French users Google about um, Muslims in India, Musulmans en Inde? Here first thing is uh, apart from Indian flags and maps, lots of protests. One picture of a wedding. What if our French users Google about Muslims in Pakistan? Faisal Mosque, flags burning, the French flag is burning in this picture. But then what if we Google, our French user Googles Muslims in Mauritius? Here it's much more diverse. Yeah, people gathered for maybe some political events, some families gathered for perhaps a wedding, some posters from events, one picture of a a beach and one picture of a Hindu temple. But now, what if we locate ourselves in Poland? Again, if we Google a located in Poland, uh, Muzumania, uh, we only see the very same thing as if we Googled the same thing in England. So what if we uh, look for other parts of the world in Polish? located in Poland. Muzumania ve Franci. So yeah, again, it's very similar to what we've seen at the beginning. What if the first impression you get is Muslims in France, they only pray and protest. That's about it. What if our Polish user Googles Muslims in, in, in Spain? Very similar to before. Now Muslims in the US, Trump, uh, the American flag, now Muslims in India, Muslims in Pakistan, Muslims in Mauritius, if you Google from Poland, all the nice beaches, uh, some Hindu temples here, and that's about it. Now, in, to finish this series, what if we Google uh, located in India and typing in Nev Devnagari, and Muslims in, uh, in the UK, now Muslims in France, Muslims in Poland, now Muslims in the US, Muslims in Pakistan now, Muslims in Mauritius. So is Google biased, you may ask? You may argue that if someone, let's say, wants to know more about the life of ordinary Muslims in France, if they type Muslims in France, they're going to return this very heavily politically charged uh, pictures of people protesting, people praying, uh, as if I was mentioning. The only thing it seems people do in France is praying and protesting. 
uh, and there is no representation of people just getting on with their lives. Unlike if you Google, for example, Muslims in Mauritius, and then you can see people getting married, people at family events, people smiling, you see kids, women, elder people. From what I gather, most of it is from uh, what content has most traction. And this is why what we see is pictures coming from news websites, press agencies, it will return uh, pictures depending on keywords and engagement. So is the engagement metric to blame? So research on algorithmic bias shows that, you know, for example, Twitter used to have a far right bias. And because again, what is the most controversial will provoke the most engagement. It reflects what makes people talk. So should Google then tweak its algorithm? Because the thing is, Google doesn't know our intention when searching. How do you integrate intent, your intention when searching? The only solution, well, is to refine your search query with keywords. Google has, not, has no monopoly on knowledge, so there's other databases of knowledge you can look at. Uh, let's say, for example, scholarly books and articles, or if you're looking for more general content, you can even go on YouTube and search content made by ordinary people, if not by people who are experts in one discipline or another, sociology, anthropology, history, and so on. In sum, well, I guess the responsibility falls on our shoulders. If you want to see certain content, you need to know how to search in the right places and in the right manner. It's a reminder for us to wear our critical lenses when we are looking and filtering out information. Well, that was a fun experiment. Thank you very much for watching and again, take care of each other.